Hi, everyone. Welcome to Arthritis at Home. My name is Cheryl Cohen. I'm with Arthritis Consumer Experts, the host of Arthritis at Home. And it's really great to be here with you today to talk to someone um, who is uh, just one of those super bright and special people in the ACE world, uh, Ellen Wang. Let me uh, welcome her to the program. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning, Cheryl. Thank you so much for having me. It's great for, to see you. Um, and for our audience, Ellen, I'll give them a little bit of information about you. I think, uh, I think this is going to be a super interesting conversation for, for our audience to listen in on. Um, Ellen is a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Linda Lee, and Dr. Linda Lee is someone well known to our audience. Um, at the University of British Columbia. She received her master's and bachelor of science in kinesiology at the University of Waterloo. So we've stolen you away uh, from Ontario and brought you here to where our headquarters are, uh, are housed in British Columbia. Um, during uh, her time in Ontario, Ellen volunteered in exercise programs for patients undergoing cancer treatment individuals with heart disease and older adults living with dementia and their care partners. So huge uh, uh, kudos to you, Ellen, for diving into that volunteer experience. So, so valuable for those um, patients and I'm sure their families as well. Um, in addition, Ellen was involved in several implementation projects that are, uh, aim to improve mobility and physical function. So something near and dear to the hearts of our audience. Um, in specific, uh, she wants to understand um, how health literacy and patient education influence self-management behaviors um, because your experience has really led you into this sort of keen interest um, in uh, self-management and chronic conditions. Uh, so outside of your studies, that's a little bit about your academic life, Ellen, outside of your studies, Ellen works as a yoga instructor and a personal trainer, and she loves to prepare uh, colorful meals and curate fun playlists. I love that. Ellen also joined her Freitas Consumer Experts uh, only just recently, so we're so happy to have Ellen uh, on the team. She contributes to content development for joint health programs and the Arthritis Broadcast Network. What is it that made you want to grow up and be a researcher, young lady? You know, it's a great question, Cheryl. And the more that you reflect back on, on uh, your own childhood, you kind of see where, where things lead you because I've always been a really curious person. And um, you, as you know, I learn best by doing and getting feedback and then doing again. So like research and iterative process. So I, I learned really well this way. Um, in my third year of undergrad, I met my master's supervisor, Dr. Laura Jean Gregorio, who is very involved in the bone health world. So she's a part of the Osteoporosis Canada network. And the first day I walked into her class, she said, all right, guys, the only thing I hope you take away from this course is to think critically, right, as a clinician. Yeah. And that, you know, really struck me. And I, I love that course. So I reached out to her and said, you know, I don't know anything about research. I really like you. Can I get involved? And, you know, she's like, I don't have any projects on the go that we need, you know, hands on. Yeah. But how's this idea of doing kind of like a review of all the different exercise guidelines? So I looked at clinical practice guidelines. I looked at the exercise recommendation section for different chronic conditions. So that's diabetes, arthritis, osteoporosis, high blood pressure. And I looked at the similarities and the differences for kind of my undergraduate thesis. And I thought it was a very, very slow, very tedious process. But at the end of it, there was that, that nice payoff, like, wow, I, I really did learn something. So from there, I knew I, I'm not stopping. You here. were hooked. You were I hooked. Was hooked. I was hooked <laughs> on how frustrated and difficult it was. And how much problem solving was involved. And I did my master's, uh, which as you know, it was an implementation project yeah. uh, in, in kind of the field of chronic conditions and uh, improving mobility and physical function. And that's, you know, it's this story, every person's story on how they got into research is unique, 
but there is that common thread about how kind of they fell, you know, fell into the deep end of the research pool, so to speak. Tell us a little bit about your uh, research trajectory. Like, what do you plan to study? For kind of the trajectory of where I'm going at the moment, Cheryl, we're still, as you know, <laughs> throwing a few things in the air, taking a few things down. And again, again, this iterative process and just learning to embrace, you know, this, this idea that I currently have of, you know, really wanting to understand, okay, a lot of individuals have chronic conditions. Some are provided with the same information as others. However, some individuals always fare really well and self-manage extremely well, and others don't. And it's, you know, a lot of it is that social demographic uh, piece, but sometimes it isn't. So that really made me, through my implementation products, realize, okay, what is this gap? What is that black box that, because it's not the presence of chronic condition that dictates the outcome. It's, it's something that we don't really, really understand yet. So that's why I really want to figure out, okay, so how do we empower or how do we, I shouldn't use that word. I should really say, you know, how do we support people to gain the confidence they need, like, like in your work, self-advocate, self-manage. Yeah self-care for their conditions. So I have this idea that, or the literature suggests that health literacy is a really important component. So again, something brand new to me. And then the second part is patient activation, which Dr. Linda Lee has actually, you know, quite familiar with, and she and the opera study are doing a really good job of looking at this problem. So bridging what Dr. Linda Lee knows, bridging this health literacy component that I'm trying to learn um, on the side and into this idea of, okay, how do we promote, how do yeah. we support this idea of self-management? Um, it's sort of like a Venn diagram where those circles uh, cross over. You know, when I hear you talking, Ellen, it, I mean, so just we're living still, uh, unfortunately, in, in a pandemic. And you think about people that have received information either from the public health, you know, officers, uh, from a patient websites or from government websites or from healthcare providers, take that information, sit down, contextualize it, and then they make a decision. And the decision ends up being a good one and they have a positive health outcome. That's someone who has probably pretty good or, or at least um, sort of a reasonable level of health literacy. Bingo. Right. And so then there are other people who receive that same information, the exact same key message, the exact same pamphlet. They had the exact same conversation with their healthcare provider, went away, contextualized it, but ended up with not the best outcome. And what I think what you're trying to figure out, what's the difference between those two people? What's the magic sauce besides the things we already know, which are, um, you know, socioeconomic status, uh, perhaps uh, cultural beliefs or lack thereof. Um, how do those interplay with making and taking a decision that then leads to an outcome that is a good one? Not many people know, and now more people are going to know that you juggle both this sort of full-time student academic career, growing academic career, as well as manage your own rheumatic condition. So tell us how you do that, because that's a lot to have on, on your plate. Um, so why don't you share with our audience uh, some of the things that you do, some areas where you meet with success and some places where you may still have remaining challenges. I think every day living with a rheumatic disease or condition is a challenge. There's this kind of lesson I continue to learn. And the most important thing for me is understanding that there are times when I'm going to be better at self-management than others. That yeah. some days I'm going to put me as a student first and me as a patient second, right? And understanding that I'm going to have to make up for it for the next yeah. month after that, but it's okay. It's okay to not always 
be the best self manager. So, you know, allowing myself that um, and feeling, you know, that sense of compassion and empathy. Okay, this week wasn't great. I'll do uh, better next week. And then the other thing I do is try to really dedicate time, really like protect time for, for both. So, you know, yeah. I work from these hours, this hour to this hour every day, but then what is that one hour, at least one hour a day that I'm going to protect to be, be patient and take care of myself? Um, it can be reading, it can be taking a nice warm shower and doing some stretches, right? Um, it can be going for a really nice slow walk where you just take some deep breaths yeah. every, every so often and um, whatever that you need to do so blocking off that time like have it in your schedule if you need because we're all so busy right block off that time and um, and then the other thing is just to find things I really I really enjoy right it, yes I am a full-time student and patient but if you enjoy what you're doing you're lucky enough um, in my case to be in a role that allows for both um I don't find it no longer is is work and it's interesting, we have 50,000 members across the country, Ellen, and they share with us some of the things that they do and they, they, they have such great range. And, you know, it's not a one size fits all solution, obviously. It's, it's what works uh, for you. And when you use the word patient as it relates to this piece of your day where you say, okay, this is my time to be a patient. It describe that, your choice of that word patient. Yeah, great, great point, uh, Cheryl. And I, you know, I love, I love this discussion because I'm, as as somebody in the field, I found all of the jargon and the misuse of terms, you know, very confusing. So I couldn't, I couldn't imagine like being someone not in the field and not knowing what yeah. all of these words meant in different contexts. Um, I I chose to use the word patient, I think, because um, I've been reading into the patient activation literature that is that is actually the the term that you search out <laughs> when you put it into yeah. an academic search engine and the way they describe it is I as a as a patient or as as a consumer I it is my full-time role because I'm advocating for myself constantly right whether that's you know how I hold myself to what I say and what I do I am a full-time advocate right and it is my lifestyle, you know, in terms of what I eat, how I eat, when I move, um, I have to stand up more, more, more often than the, you know, most yeah. people because, because of the condition and the stiffness. So for me, that is like, it, it's something I pride myself in. It's, it is my full-time role to be um, a consumer, a patient, but I do, I do love where you're coming with that word. Um, and, you know, it makes me reflect on my own use which is really important in health literacy is, okay, it's not what we say or what we want to communicate, it's how we deliver yeah. it. Right? Yeah, there's so, been this tension over the years about the use of this word. And just listening to you now, I'm thinking, oh, wow, actually, I kind of like that idea of I'm a patient all the time and I'm constantly making these decisions. And then I think, okay, well, we went with consumer because we thought consumer had power, like I had a choice, right? And that was, that gave me power as a person. I think at the end of the day, we can be both. And we, it's a, it's a lovely dance in terms of the word we may uh, choose to use to describe ourselves. But at the end of the day, we're people, we're human beings yes. living with some type of rheumatic disease, if in fact we're, we're involved in this conversation uh, at arthritis at home. And, uh, and we are having to self-care through our days. And with rheumatic disease, you know, something particularly that's autoimmune, there's never a break. You're, it's, it doesn't ever go away. It's not like I received some treatment that took away, you know, a, a mass or a or a, a fever, or a, I have something that never goes away. And I'm having to care for it. Therefore, I'm in patient role all of the time. I'm also in a consumer role because I'm having to make choices about, you know, the things I'm doing for myself as a patient. You know, when you think about your yoga practice, 
and helping others learn uh, how to have their own personal practice, whether it's with a group or on their own. How do you how do you see that and the role that it plays in 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 arthritis in in you know diseases a whole host of diseases that really impact on our mobility and yoga I think a lot I know when I practiced um, start first started practicing I thought oh I can't twist up in a pretzel like that <laughs> you know so a lot of people don't engage in it but what do you think are the benefits for people living uh, with a, a, some type of arthritis. Absolutely. And I think this comes right back to your point, Shira, that we are, we are a person, right? We're a yeah. human, human to begin. And um, interesting enough, you know, yoga actually means oneness. It does not mean I'm going to put my body in the pretzel shape, which is, I know it's, it's so, uh, the, our modernization of yoga and our kind of mainstream take on it is, you know, that it is some sort of exercise, right? Yeah. That, that works on mobility, which is which is great. And I love it and I do it, don't get me wrong. But yoga in its true sense is a sense of oneness. When you see people practicing meditation, that is yoga. And I I, I do walking meditations actually. Oh, wow. So that's, because I, I can't sit quietly and do nothing because my body is like, oh, this is so uncomfortable. Yeah. And, you know, I think that is yoga. So understanding that the practice of yoga, yoga is really oneness. And what that I think means for me, at least is, is wellness is, is that self care. So I think it, it really goes hand in hand beautifully. Um, and if your practice of self care is, you know, reading a book and just, or maybe, you know, sitting with your cup of coffee, admiring the beautiful weather outside we have today. And that gives you a sense of oneness or maybe that is kind of meditative to you, then is that is that not yoga, right? Yeah. In its yeah. truest form. So I think letting go of the fact that, you know, there is that physical side of yoga. Um, and, you know, I've, I've learned to be like, you know what, I, I am practicing wellness by sitting here a few minutes too That's long nice. with my cup of coffee. I like that idea. And we're so happy that you were able to join us, Ellen. Um, you're, I just, it's so exciting to meet young people like yourself who are starting out in their research career. Um, and it's not, your life obviously won't just be about research. It'll be about what happens with the research, the integration of the things that you research and, and, and kind of find solutions on and then translate out into ways that people can implement or act on um, your knowledge, uh, I think it's just going to be, it's just always so exciting for us. Thank you so much, uh, Alan, for, for coming on board. And uh, we obviously will be watching your research uh, development uh, very closely. Thank you, Cheryl. I am so grateful for this opportunity and um, yeah, to be able to connect with everyone in at uh, the Arthritis Consumer experts in our audience so again thank you for the opportunity we look forward to uh, seeing you back on the program next week uh, we look forward to sharing more uh, topics of interest uh, with you as we are really in the heart of fall now I guess entering winter so I uh, hope everyone is well um, we, you can always visit us at uh, www.jointhealth.org uh, to learn more. And uh, we encourage you to share this episode with friends you uh, think might be interested in our conversation with Ms. Ellen Wang. Bye for now.